it's important to know when to stop playing a video game. Perhaps at the point where you've already played for hours today, or if you have some schoolwork to get done, or because you're getting so angry at a boss fight you can hear the controller in your hands is right on the verge of being snapped in half. Yeah, medium creak. Probably good for another half hour. But some games have no respect for our desire to take a breather and deploy guilt trip tactics if we ever do try to stop playing. Sometimes with mocking messages that call our courage into question, sarcastic consequences for stepping away, or just asserting that quitting means our character drives their car off a cliff for some reason. Yikes. Here are the games that gave you a major guilt trip for quitting. They say that a dog is man's best friend, but if that's true, it might be one of those toxic friendships I keep hearing about on Instagram. After all, a faithful hound will love and adore you, its owner, more or less unconditionally. So responsible owners must strive to reward that love fairly, with good care, daily walks, and that thing where you pretend to throw a ball a few times first to get them really amped up for when the ball really gets thrown. If your dog is a virtual dog of the kind found in Nintendo DS Pet Sim series Nintendogs, the task is even more straightforward, because these hounds can be cared for on your schedule. Also, in this game, proper care largely involves dressing your dog in fancy hats and whistling once to get its attention, then rubbing its soft belly. Oh yes, oh yes, that's a soft belly. The fact that these virtual dogs are so adorable and frankly very easy to care for is what makes your punishment for stopping playing all the more painful. If, like almost everyone who played Nintendogs, you eventually got bored and quit playing, well, the game isn't going to just let that one go. Fire up Nintendogs after a long absence and you might expect to see your once beloved papa running up to you delightedly to welcome you back, eager to play like you did in 2005, namely while wearing bootcut jeans and listening to that Green Day comeback album. Instead, you'll be firing up the game to find your Nintendog, well, hates you now. <coughs> Filthy to the point that it's covered in fleas, don't expect your dog to come when you whistle anymore. Lucky here has had his heart broken, and he now prefers to sit morosely alone reflecting on what once was and snapping at you when you attempt a summons. <coughs> Persist and your dog will answer your call eventually, although up close all you get is a better view of quite how flea infested your puppy has become, cementing your intense feelings of guilt. To twist the knife, Lucky is also starving, your abandoned Nintendog having achieved max hunger levels since being abandoned. Which isn't surprising, I mean, god knows how this one survived this long without being fed. Hang on, I'm sure I had other Nintendogs back in 2005. Oh, Lucky. What did you do? Wolfenstein's Wolfenstein 3D is fated as a pioneering video game in many respects, for its landmark 3D environments for instance, which, you'll just have to trust me at one point in time, were very impressive. As a result, a great many owners of home computers poured hundreds and hundreds of hours into playing Wolfenstein 3D, and while that was partly down to the game being visually impressive and fun to play, we can't help but think it was also due to the game making it very hard to stop playing thanks to its propensity to shame you horribly for wanting to quit. Should you make the call that your fingers are getting sore now so you've probably had enough of gunning down pixelated Nazis for today and navigate to the quit option on the main menu to exit the game, you will be met with one of several messages designed to guilt you into changing your mind. Cower in shame? Bit harsh? I was just gonna go do some laundry. I really need to do it, I've been putting it off for days. Certainly, dialogue choices in a 28-year-old main menu shouldn't have the power to influence our decisions, and yet, seeing these kinds of messages whenever you do try and quit does weirdly make you feel sort of guilty for doing so. Ouch! Perhaps it would be worth exploring why the approval of an unthinking video game is so important to me to have, but frankly I don't think we have time. Especially not when I apparently have so much more Wolfenstein to play.
Tony Stark once said, No amount of money ever bought a second of time, and I only wish he'd told me that before I gave Blizzard Entertainment all of both. But to be fair, quitting MMORPG World of Warcraft is no easy thing. How to walk away from a game in which you may have spent hundreds of hours, maybe thousands of hours, however many hours it takes for what you're seeing on screen now to turn into readable information. A lot of hours. Beware. To reach the end game of World of Warcraft is to have learned an immense amount about the sprawling world of Azeroth, a journey upon which you may well have made real friends and achieved feats of persistence and endurance that you will never be able to make the vast majority of your fellow humans care about. But there will likely come a point where it's time to let your guild down gently, hang up the giant glowing pauldrons and quit World of Warcraft. The last step in stepping away is cancelling the monthly subscription required to play the game. I mean, unless you just want to keep paying Blizzard $15 a month in perpetuity. You would hope that having taken what is possibly a large amount of your money and very probably a large amount of your time, that when you ask to cancel your subscription, World of Warcraft would have the good grace to say, fair enough, sorry to see you go, thanks for the memories. But for a long time after the game first launched, instead those who tried to quit were met with this sarcastically guilt-inducing image. Yes, that's a weeping orc peon crying at the very thought of you leaving, along with an assurance that by unsubscribing you're making the peon cry. Though patently ridiculous, this unexpected emotional appeal came right out of the blue, and right at the point where players attempting to leave were most fragile, and the thought of cheering up a JPEG of an orc may well have been all the push they needed to hit cancel and dive right back in. Proceed with cancellation and you'd be informed the peon is full on weeping at your choice, although it's probably not crying anymore having itself been deleted some time ago, in favour of a much more boring website that, to be fair, no longer lays on the guilt quite so thick. It still reminds you that all your beloved characters will continue to exist however should you ever choose to return one day, like that dog in that one Futurama episode, you know, just waiting there for you forever. Anyway, I'm sure you made the right choice, let's move on. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, you try to live your best life on a wonderful getaway island, and by living your best life, we mean doing a bunch of daily chores. Whilst a very relaxing game full of fishing, catching bugs and trying to make your island look pretty, Animal Crossing is, by design, supposed to be played habitually. It has animals that you need to collect, spawning at different times of day and at different times of the year, as well as various daily tasks you can pop on and complete to earn more precious bells, and shops that have different stock in them every day, encouraging you to check in regularly. However, whilst humans are creatures of habit, we are also creatures of breaking habits all the time because life just be like that sometimes. So whether you decide to take a break yourself or you just wake up one day and realise you haven't picked up the game for a few weeks, it is perfectly normal to quit Animal Crossing. But if you return, you'd best prepare yourself for some high-level guilt tripping. First off, when you wake up, your hair is a total mess. Yes, because you failed to check in for a while, your personal grooming has suffered horribly and you look like you've been pulled backwards through a hedge. Not only that, but step inside your house and you'll find that, oh god, you've been away so long that cockroaches have decided to claim squatters' rights. It's up to you, over three days, to squash that idea. Literally. But most punishing of all are the villagers. These are the cute animal residents that live on your island who you constantly have to do jobs for in exchange for clothes they don't want. Cool, let's see what this kid's smock looks like. I always get like... No. <laughs> Why do villagers give me such bad clothes? But you can build up quite a bond with some of them, so when one of them turns around and says how hurt they are that you haven't spoken to them in so long, it can be a real stab in the gut. Yeah. 
and a twist of the knife. I didn't chat to you the last time. Literally, I had a gap and then I came back and I had another gap, so I've not talked to you. <laughs> so sorry. People are fighting over you on the internet. People want you. I'm so sorry. Well, guess I'm saying hi to Sherb every day until my Switch cartridge disintegrates so I don't feel like that ever again. Damn you, Animal Crossing. It was the sudden appearance of a warp storm at the Cow River System's outer edge that first caught the attention of the Imperium. And not just the Imperium. Perhaps you think the far future will be all Star Trek. You know, utopias and exciting adventures and romancing aliens. Well, guess what, Dreamer? If you're not toiling in Elon Musk's Martian sulfur mines, you'll be getting your head chainsawed off by marauding alien orcs. Send me to the fight! Such is the grim vision of the future presented by Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War, a real-time strategy title based off the hit tabletop game that sees you trying to conquer the entire core of the system. Trouble is, that's also the goal of every other war-hungry alien race under the sun, and several other suns besides, which means that before this all ends, a lot of sci-fi soldiers are going to have to be turned into red mist. You wouldn't think it would ever get tiresome to see an orc mech thrashing someone into jam. But with such large-scale battles across a system-wide war zone, it's understandable that you'd want to take a break every now and then, and you would expect the game to understand that and not cast aspersions on you for doing so. And it is with that swelling sense of optimism that we navigate to the game's main menu to exit the game, only to find this unambiguous message waiting for the wary gamer. Cowards die in shame. Ouch. I mean, did it have to be in all caps? Although, I guess orcs do seem to live their whole lives in all caps. I have the power of Gork and Mork! If you were anything like me as a child, you were constantly asking your parents for a pet. But sadly, saying I really love cats or, you know, I really think we could fit a pony in the garden 50 million times doesn't actually seem to work. So, again, if you were anything like me, you eventually gave up and signed up for online browser-based pet sim Neopets. Here you could create your own imaginary pets, not limited to felines or even just to real-world creatures. It was up to you to create and name your perfect animal friends, then look after them and make sure they stayed happy, mostly by earning Neo points in games on the site that you could then use to buy food, toys and clothes for them in the shops. However, sometimes you were prevented from logging on every day. For example, getting dragged away from the computer for a family holiday, or not being allowed online for a while because you still have dial-up internet and someone is waiting for an important grown-up business call, or perhaps you realised that having a virtual pet that you can't hug did nothing to fill the void of not having a real pet that you can hug, and none of the minigames were as good as just playing RuneScape. So you left the game and got on with other things in your life until you thought, hey, perhaps I should give it another go. So you log on only to find that, oh my god! Yes, you check up on your allegedly beloved pets only to find that, oh no, you were offline for so long and they weren't getting fed for all that time and now they're actually dying. Not only do they have a red status on their hunger, but they also stare up at you with eyes full of sadness, judging you for your total abandonment and betrayal. So off you panic into your items to feed them all, unless you're like me, in which case you have to choose which pet gets your single life-saving bowl of mashed potato and gravy. Oh god, I'm sorry. Okay, let's just go on a few visits to the fairy soup kitchen. I'm so sorry. Please stop looking at me like that. You think I wanted to spend two weeks in the rain in Skegness? The 1995 first-person shooter Rise of the Triad started life as a follow-up to Wolfenstein 3D, and if you play it now you can certainly see the ways in which the game tries to one-up that seminal title, for instance with groundbreaking mechanics like looking up. Nice. Besides that, and of course the general way Rise of the Triad looks and feels to play, there are other similarities too. For instance, remember Wolfenstein 3D's sarcastic difficulty settings with the infamous Can I Play Daddy Easy Mode. 
Well, the difficulty modes in Rise of the Triad also have funny names, although they're the wrong way round. The enemy will devour me is surely a more accurate description of hard mode. With all these similarities, it's only to be expected that Rise of the Triad would also try to one-up Wolfenstein 3D's amusing one-liners, which guilt trip players hoping to quit the game. And, well, we would certainly describe what follows as an escalation. Because in Rise of the Triad, when you ask to quit, the game dreams up immensely cruel and completely arbitrary deaths for your heroic player character, that if you do want out of the game, you are forced to comply with. Oh, and if you do select yes, you even hear that grisly death play out. Keep playing and you'll find there are a distressing number of these murderous guilt-inducing dialogue boxes programmed into the game. So many, in fact, that you'll wonder if the development team spent more time programming these than they did anything else. I mean, cyanide gas? Electric chair. This isn't going to be nice. This guilt trip tactic arguably backfired, however, as we expect many players deliberately quit the game over and over to try and see all of the extremely unpleasant character deaths on offer. Some of them have impressively little bearing on the game itself, presenting you with, for instance, the command to drive your car off the cliff. There isn't even a car in the game. But hang on, press Y to pull your plug. Does that even work? How would I turn off my own life support? Oh, well, guess I managed it. Shows what I know. So those are some of the guilt trips that games gave us for trying to quit and get on with other things in our lives. Damn them. <laughs> but can you think of any others? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please do give us a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you haven't already to see loads more videos like this. In fact, hey, wait, maybe you don't go just yet. Like, you could check out some of our other videos. Like, we do live streams and we do other less videos like this and it'd be really sad and, you know, be really upset if you didn't, like, check them out. Is this working? Is it working? Go, go, go click on the videos. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>